Good morning, everybody. Welcome to um, our first light bite of the season. So I've got um, today a selection of images from our portfolio of projects, um, which should be quite inspiring for you. But I've also got um, a test project as well. So I thought it'd be quite nice for us to build up a lighting design together. And I can take you through some of the considerations I'm making um, as we go through it. Um, so this is my, my space, my open plan living area. So I've got kitchen, dining and living uh, spaces. Um, the first thing I want to do before even thinking about the lighting is to understand the space. Um, so I'll be speaking to the client and to the other project members about uh, how is this space going to be used? Um, how is the client going to interact with it? Uh, what's the furniture layout going to be? So that's all plotted onto the drawing now. Uh, some things we'll have to make assumptions on. So obviously you've got the dining table here. Um, coffee table and sofa, you've got a, a TV unit which will be used for displaying different items. You've got a couple of console tables, one over here and one here, and then I've also marked on where we might have artwork on the walls. And then in the kitchen here you've got some tool units, you've got wall hung units, obviously the sink area uh, and the kitchen island in the middle. Um, and outside of this space you've got the garden, so um, these windows here look out onto that outside space. So the first thing we want to do is create um, different zones because um, essentially here we do have three different rooms uh, and we do want to mark those. So in the living space what I'm going to do is have a single uh, narrow beam uh, ceiling recess spotlight in the ceiling and that's going to give us a focus light onto the coffee table. I might have a vase of flowers or something there which would be nice to light. Over the dining table um, I'm going to go for a decorative pendant here. Now you could do a decorative hanging lights over the island, but I'm going to do it on the dining table because I think that's going to give me a nice intimate um, ambient lighting effect. But I'm also going to have two directional um, spotlights either side of that as well. And I can use those either to cross light through the um, pendant. If it's a chandelier, that'll make the uh, crystal sparkle. Um, or I can use those to focus down onto the table itself. And then in the kitchen, I've, got, I've gone for these um, twin fittings here with the two light sources to give you lots and lots of task light onto this key work surface. So there you've got now a focus light into the center of each of those three spaces, so clearly marking them out. So here's some images of what I'm thinking. So um, hanging lights over the dining table. I've tried to mix up the images here with a little bit of contemporary, a little bit of traditional, just so we touch, uh, you touch on every style for people. Um, and then I've also added in here some lights either side of the chandelier. It's a little bit misleading, this photo. Ignore the effect light on the shutters. What we're looking at is the light through the chandelier and onto the table. You can see you get the focus light here, uh, which you don't get from just having the ambient decorative lighting. So that's, it makes a big impact. In the kitchen, um, you can see in the, in the ceiling here, we've got those double twin fittings there. They're going to give us lots of task light onto the work surface. And then in the middle of the seating area, this focused beam of light onto a vase of flowers on the coffee table. Next thing I want to add in is some directional light. So directional light is really important to a lighting scheme uh, because it's going to give us a soft reflected light into the room. Um, and it's going to give you a nice ambient lighting effect. So I'm going to do that by using some ceiling recessed directional lights. Um, so this one here, lighting the artwork on the wall here as well and above this console table. So what you can do with the directional light is to create a focused beam that's going to hit right into the middle of the artwork and really pick it off the wall um, as, a, as a key feature within the space. Then in the kitchens, I'm going to use Again, directional lights in the ceiling around the perimeter of the room, and they're going to light towards the kitchen units. Again, bouncing light back into the space. Let me show you that in practice. So here on the left-hand side, you can see how we're using the directional light in the scene to give you that arc of light onto the kitchen cupboards. Now you can see with the position is really, really key. And when we're doing the lighting plan, we need to totally understand um, what the kitchen layouts are. Ideally, we want elevations as well so that we can make sure that that light is going to be centered on that cupboard door. You do have joists and things that get in the way typically, but um, we can make a little adjustments, move it to the slide slightly and then direct it back to the center. And then on the right hand side here, you can see how the light's really focused into the center of the artwork, um, picking it off the wall. Um, 
the distance away from the feature that you want to light, thank you Gemma for your question, um, is really dependent on the ceiling height because your directional lights will only tilt uh, by a certain amount. Uh, the ones that John Cullen will tilt 30, 35 degrees. Um, so if you give us a call with your ceiling heights and the height of the item that you want to light, then we can advise you on the best position to, to um, put the directional light so you get the right effect. So it's going to be different for cupboards because they go taller, so you need the light to be closer to the to the wall, whereas with artwork you come away a little bit from the wall and you light back towards it so you get a nice um, circle of light onto the picture. So we've done the directional um, perimeter lighting, um, now I'm going to add in some additional ambient light because I've got the decorative light over the over the dining table, uh, but I'm going to supplement that with some some lamp light. So the console table obviously is a, a perfect location for a pair of lamps. I'm going to frame the piece of artwork in the middle. Over here I'm just going to have one on the console table and that's going to be balanced out by uh, a little low level coffee table here with a, a lamp. That's going to need to be plugged into a socket underneath the sofa so that we don't have a trailing cable which could be a trip hazard. So again another reason why you need to plan that furniture layout in advance so you can position things like floor sockets and they're going to be hidden from view. All of these I'm going to dim on a 5 amp circuit so I can control them as part of the lighting channel rather than having to go around the room turning on all the lights individually and it also allows you to dim the lights which really changes the mood. Over here I've got a little chair and I thought it'd be nice to have a floor standing reading light which will just lean over the chair and give you a bit of task lighting and then in the in the kitchen as well I think you can't forget the kitchen um, on this uh, on this channel um, you don't want the kitchen to be totally dark um, while you're dining over here so it's quite nice to have a soft lighting effect over here you use a little direct a uh, little wall mounted task light there so in practice this is what it would look like there's your um, wall mounted light in the kitchen pair of lamps on a coffee table and then here um, task light um, to the chair. The next uh, group of lights I'm going to add in are task lights in the kitchen. Um, so there's plenty of different options you can go for um, here. Uh, so under the wall hung units, perfect opportunity to uh, incorporate some lighting underneath. Um, so you can go for linear or you can go for uh, individual under cupboard lights. I'm going for linear. That's my personal preference at the moment. Um, I find that it's just a bit more of a discrete option. You get a continuous light effect all the way across the unit uh, and onto the work surface, so I find it less distracting. And then in the hob here, um, these lights are going to be in the canopy. So rather than relying on the lights which are built into the extractor, um, I'm going to supply some um, supplementary lights there as well. And what I'm going to do is set those very close to the wall so they skim down the tiles at the back of the cooker and they create a nice architectural feature um, and they also give you the working light that you want as well. 